So now we go from people on film to people in the flesh. We're going to be hearing from Christine Brown. She's on the faculty at City of Hope, and she's also immersed herself in developing a kind of cellular drone system that redirects T cells to eliminate malignant cells. And these synthetic drugs can actually recreate themselves and keep generating the anti-tumor immunity you we're hearing about and do it for a long time. So as we begin our new round of deliverables, live from the City of Hope Alpha Clinic, starring role, the CAR T cells therapy with Christine Brown. <laughs> the landscape of this therapy in the last few years 
is applying this therapy to CD19 CAR T cells. CD19 is a receptor that's expressed on the majority of leukemias and lymphomas or B cell malignancies. And it's being tested in many institutions and being shown to have profound anti-tumor effects when um, administered to patients. So just to give one example of a patient recently uh, treated here at City of Hope. I apologize, but can we go forward one? So this is a gentleman with relapsed high-grade lymphoma. And he had extensive disease in the muscle, bone, lymph nodes, and throughout the body. And so he came to City of Hope, we took his T-cells, we engineered his T-cells to express the CD19-specific CAR, and then we adoptively transferred um, 200 million CAR T-cells back um, into, the, into this patient. And what we saw over 28 days was quite remarkable. His T-cells, his genetically modified T-cells, um, eliminated all detectable disease. And so even now, um, even though this is early on, two months after uh, his administration of his CAR T cells, he remains disease free. And so when we think about this therapy, the question is what have we learned? Given that uh, hundreds of patients now have been treated with uh, CD19 CAR T cells at many institutions, what sort of take home lessons can we um, learn from this and apply to other cancers? And I think the first is that independent of differences in car design, trial design, manufacturing platforms, we've seen impressive clinical efficacy. And this really speaks to the robustness of the therapy. The second important lesson, wow, we skipped all the way to the end. Um, the second important lesson is that because this is such a strong immune response, there's often toxicities associated that might be different with some other therapies, and these include cytokine release syndrome and neurotoxicity. And I think an important component of the therapy has been learning how to manage these toxicities while preserving clinical responses. And lastly, we, um, one of the key sort of take home messages is we really want to understand what differentiates those patients that respond to the therapy who might not have such a robust, robust, robust response. And one aspect really comes to the observation that therapeutic efficacy correlates with the level of CAR T cell persistence and proliferation. So what impacts the ability of the therapy itself to proliferate and persist after adoptive transfer? Well, one component of that is really the product itself. And so when you think of um, T cells, they actually exist, like many organ systems, in many different stages of differentiation. And so upon antigen engagement, naive cells progressively differentiate along this linear path. Where the most um, differentiated T cells are the effector T cells. And um, while they're very good at killing, they're sort of the best killers, they're short-lived. And early trials with CAR T cell therapies really focused on products that had the majority of effector T cells. And paradoxically, what we found, even though these cells were good at killing, they weren't very therapeutically effective. And so more recent advances really focusing on less differentiated memory cells with stem cell-like characteristics at self-renewal and proliferation um, potential has really improved the therapeutic efficacy and there's a correlation with the uh, stem cell component with persistence and proliferation. So with these lessons learned from CD19 CAR T cell therapy, where, where are we going next? And really the next frontier is expanding beyond CD19, applying this therapy to solid tumors. And at City of Hope, we've had a long-standing interest in applying this therapy to brain tumors, specifically glioblastoma, one of the most aggressive brain tumors, and a very uh, one of the least curable of cancers. Uh, patients with a glioblastoma, uh, less than 5% of patients usually live beyond five years. 
And so our lead program uh, to develop CAR therapy for uh, glioblastoma is focused on a specific receptor. It's a high affinity IL-13 receptor, IL-13 receptor alpha-2. And it really meets that strict criteria of being overexpressed on malignant brain tumors, but not expressed on normal brain. And that's critical for such a sensitive location of these tumors in the brain. And so we've gone on to develop um, a chimeric antigen receptor to target IL-13 receptor alpha-2. And it's um, somewhat unique in its design because it's a ligand-based CAR, not an antibody-based CAR. So using a membrane-bound IL-13 ligand, um, we've optimized this platform with generous funding through a preclinical pre grant supported by CERM, uh, testing a panel of CAR designs. And so we optimized it for co-stimulation, linker design, and we went on to maximize, uh, uh, optimize the manufacturing platform as well, again to maximize T-cell self-renewal. So we um, have focused on a manufacturing platform that enrich enriches for less differentiated central memory T-cells, including CD4 health and limiting ex vivo expansion. And so what we can show in animal models using human tumors that are expressing the firefly luciferase gene, so biophotonically we can monitor tumor growth, is that single infusion of very low numbers of cells, here 100,000 cells, can mediate tumor regression as compared to tumor only or T cells that don't express a CAR. These CAR cells can also uh, mediate long-term survival in these mice and we've used these models that, to inform us on our clinical trial design, to ask the question, what's the best way to deliver these cells? So we've compared local delivery in the brain to systemic delivery, and we've de um, shown that local delivery in the brain of these mice significantly outperform intravenous delivery. We've also looked at how long these cells persist and can show that these therapeutic um, cells can persist for many weeks after adoptive transfer. So these and other studies have been really the rationale for initiating a phase one clinical trial to test this therapy in patients. And it's really a first in human trial that my collaborator in the clinical PI of this trial, Dr. Benabadi, will be speaking to, um, about next and giving some an update on some of the um, observations that we've made. And so this trial is enrolling patients with recurrent high-grade glioma. Um, while these patients undergo surgery for their tumor, the CAR T cells are manufactured. And then they're given locally with um, a Rickham device to allow us to locally infuse um, the T cells into um, either the tumor cavity or the cerebral spinal fluid. And these T cells are given on weekly cycles. And so with that, what I'd like to do is just thank our tremendous team. Um, Steve Foreman was in the previous video, but he oversees our entire T-cell program. Dr. Bedeen will speak next. He's the clinical BI for our clinical trial. Mike Barish is a long-term collaborator on glioma cancer stem cells and tumor heterogeneity. And really our entire team focused on developing and optimizing this therapy for brain tumors including our T-cell, uh, other members of our T-cell team and manufacturing uh, patient individuals that are focused on really bringing this to patients and especially CERM. So I was thinking about this before I was speaking. Um, we started this, uh, this project back in 2013 and we were able to transition um, seminal findings from our first two milestones of an early translational grant supported by CERM into a clinical trial that treated their first patient in 2015. So I think that's a tremendous accomplishment within two years going from a preclinical idea to actually treating the first patient. And that accelerated treatment would, would not have been possible without CERM support. And now patients being treated on this trial are being treated here in the Alpha Clinic. And so I think it's a, a great example of how uh, CERM can really uh, support cell-based therapies and their application for patients.
Thank you very much.